the image for 26. It's a, that's such a haunting image. And it's, you know, the, the hand reaching, <laughs> reaching into what oh, yeah. seems to be the void. I mean, this is almost like, mm -hmm. this looks like a childhood nightmare. That, it absolutely is. Yeah. Yeah, it, it absolutely 100% represents mm -hmm. uh, the, a very specific childhood terror for me. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not, it wasn't related to a particular event or, or anything like that. It just, it, it is. It absolutely draws on that that childhood terror of you know something as simple as monsters, the monster in the closet, the monster under the bed, the monster from the dark pond, mm -hmm. uh, and, and and again you can see uh, the choice of font paper was very deliberate there because it's this shadowy thing lurking in the woods and, and the house I grew up in had a had a rather large stretch of forested land behind it mm -hmm. that my father would always jokingly call the jungle. You know, and when I was very young, the, the jungle was very, very scary for me because it was very black. <clears throat> the trees were very, very large. There were, you know, there were no, uh, the, the town was relatively small at that time, so there was no light. And, you know, during the summer nights, we would hear all sorts of noises coming out of there. And, and you know, now as an adult, it's easy to say, well, that's, that was just an owl or that was just a coyote or something mm -hmm. like that. But, you know, to back then, to, to my young mind, it, it very much was, uh, you know, a place where, where monsters lived, and I was completely terrified of it. So, yeah, this sense is a distillation of that childhood terror completely. It, it still, I have an emotional reaction to all of these images even mm -hmm. now when I look at them, and it, it still makes my skin crawl a little bit. I still feel that, that yeah. tightening and that hair standing on end. Well, it makes me think of the role of the forest in every fairy tale in Sarah Orne Jewett's work and Hawthorne's work. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it, it, so you have the, I have the, the child that's still within that responds. But then, you know, I, I think of, of the, the construction of, of the forest everywhere. And when you were talking earlier about, you know, um, embodying the text uh, or serving as the embodied text proper as you're creating sort of an extension of the text and a response to it as you are it, it, it makes perfect sense because there's no forest in this passage. <laughs> there's yeah, no, there's a forest no, in, in the nightmare that the passage conjures and, and all of the childhood terrors do seem closely seated at your bedside, right? And so it's, I, I love I, I'm I'm afraid of it and I'm haunted by it, but I also love it. This um, image is very very special. That was a really good phrase. I, I sh will try to remember that one. All these childhood terrors seem closely seated at your bedside because that is that is true. That's what I can remember as a child being the most mm -hmm. afraid was in bed at night. It wasn't always when even faced with you know sometimes when you're faced with whatever it is that's making you afraid then it suddenly becomes more mundane. You know, I, you know, I just suppose that's a very understandable reaction to come being confronted with something that you ultimately realize might have been smaller than the way you constructed it in your mind. But yes, at night, uh, you know, the, the uncertainties mount and grow and, and, you know, what you can't see or hear or know or understand, uh, especially for someone like me who had, uh, you know, as vivid an imagination as a child you know, as I still do. I do. I remember. I remember many, many sleepless nights. Um, you know, and reading by flashlight under the covers, simply to <clears throat> give myself some sort of a companion. You know, the books were always my companions, and, and sort of help me get through those those terrifying times as a child. So that's a very good phrase. And, and so that, like I mentioned, these conversations and these interviews and these hearing how others view my work, they so often help me come to an understanding about myself.